what up guys well I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video um, it's been a crazy crazy week month all that fun stuff so um, Alyssa and I celebrated our one-year anniversary on the 24th of January so we decided to take a vacation to New Orleans I've never been there I heard a lot of good stuff and to me New Orleans has three of my favorite things in the whole world um, which is beer food and ghosts um, so you know we went out on a ghost tour had some good beer went to a few basketball games ate a lot of good food um, this was the first vacation I've ever taken in about 12 years so I mean it was great to not only one have a vacation but two spend it with her and three to celebrate our anniversary so it was a lot of fun um, but in the midst of all that I kind of realized that um, you know I didn't I didn't take my camera with me all the time just because it was it was something I wanted to spend with her and I didn't want to feel like I was having fun just to vlog about the fun so I didn't take that much footage but whatever footage I did take you know I'll show you out here on the vlog but it was a lot of fun New Orleans was pretty sweet um, but I missed Austin I missed coming back um, I ended up getting a promotion at Mozart so most of my time has been spent there. I haven't really been able to do that much stuff, but I've been having a lot of fun, been learning a lot of things, and a lot of the good things are going on. Yeah, so in New Orleans, we ended up going to this place called Cafe Du Mont, um, which is amazing. I recommend it to everybody. Uh, if you ever go to New Orleans, check out Cafe Du Mont. They are widely known for their uh, beignets, and they're great. So we're at Cafe and uh, so I've never had a beignet before. It's like a pie. No, don't touch it. I just bite it? Just bite it. On top of the pie? Just all of it. Just eat it all. Is it good? church it's been years since I ever stepped into a Catholic service but it was pretty awesome it was real rad pretty rad and checked out a, a voodoo museum which is it was kind of creepy to be in but it was pretty legit I liked it um,
thing that stays still long enough, we take it very, very seriously. So you can imagine the dismay when the city wasn't even 50 years old yet, and we were sold to Spain. Worst part about it, y'all, they didn't even bother to tell us. We were a Spanish colony for nearly two years before finding out. And when we did, it was within the first week of the Spanish governor coming to court. And we allowed him to get off his ship, begin enacting Spanish law for less than a year. And then, in the middle of the night, six Frenchmen stormed the governor's mansion, kicked in the front door, dragged him from his bed, forced him on the <laughs> forced him out into the street and onto the next ship headed for Spain. Those six Frenchmen are forever memorialized, by the way, for they are the ones after whom the street Frenchmen is named. Has anybody been there yet? Good, I hope you Yay. go back. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I saw a little cheers to that. <laughs> so when Spain heard of this, it took them another five years to find somebody else to come and govern the colony. And this next man that they would send was a hard man, a tough man, an uncompromising man, a man with the might of an entire, uh, the entire fleet of the Spanish Armada behind him. His name was Don Alessandro O'Reilly. <laughs> oh, really? O'Reilly? Oh, oh, really? He was an Irish expatriate and mercenary who now found himself working for Spain. And his first order of business when he came here, unfortunately, was to find those six Frenchmen responsible for the uprising and have them executed by firing squad. There, in Jackson Square. Note at the time as our Place de Armes, or for the period that we were Spanish, our Place de Armes, it is the site of more torture, more murder, and more bloodshed than anywhere else in Louisiana. It was the site of our public executions, and it is now the site of many beautiful weddings today. <laughs> Draw wood, care well as you will. Back to Pere de Gobert, he went to Governor O'Reilly and begged him to take these bodies down, that he may give them a good Christian funeral, so that their souls may be at rest. Governor O'Reilly denied his request multiple times. Out of options, Pere de Gobert fell to his knees and prayed to God that he may intercede on behalf of these Frenchmen. And before he could say amen, amen. Hey, there we go, by church, be respected. <laughs> A storm rolled over the city, the likes of which would not be seen again until August 29th, 2005. <laughs> winds were screeching through the city, the rain was coming down and dropped to the size of your fist, doors were being blown open, shutters being ripped off of windows, and of course, tiles off of rooms. Seeing this opportunity that the, gov uh, the, that <laughs> that the Spanish guards guarding those bodies that night left their stations to take shelter from the storm, Père de Gobert and the family of the six Frenchmen went and took their bodies down, taking them up what is now Antoine Alley, around the corner, taking a left on Orleans, and up to the Along the way, Pierre de Gobert sang the Kyrie. Now, <clears throat> it is said that on particularly dark nights, when the wind is howling and the rain is coming down in sheets, you can hear, starting right around the room, a voice in your ear, soft, so soft that you brush it off, you think it's nothing. But as you take the path that those men took that night, the voice gets louder and louder and louder until you swear that the pair himself was singing directly into your ear. And as you take the path that those men took that night, you can hear the jingle of the pair's rings and the swishing of his robes as he forever ushers those six souls to their eternal rest. Ain't that nice? That's nice. All right, guys, let's go this way. <laughs>